What's going on everybody? My name is Tomas and in this one I'm going to go over the basics of Premiere Pro. Uh, this video should have some longevity and can apply to different video editing suites. I'm just going to talk about some ways that I do it. Uh, you can take it or leave it as it is, but it helps me keep my workflow organized. So before we get started, um, let's say you've got some footage and some audio. Let's organize that first. I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder and just call this um, MacBook Pro project and you see here I have some source footage I'm gonna go ahead and drag it in there um, this can get messy if you have a, an extensive project so let's go ahead and create um, a file tree uh, I name my folders this way so they populate at the top I always uh, have a leading underscore now that we've got every we got some places to organize our footage let's go ahead and do so let's dump it in there and let's dump this in there all right, so now that we have a proper structure, oh, I forgot to name the audio. So this is gonna be the thoughts audio. We wanna have naming conventions that are similar across the way. So if my video is named thoughts, my audio that is associated with that video should be named the same. Again, these are all just my quirks and this is how I structure each one of my projects. Okay, so let's just create a new project. We're here at the splash screen. If you are running a Mac that has NVIDIA GPU, there is a way to get uh, CUDA acceleration. I will leave a link in the description of this video to go ahead and download that CUDA accelerator for those of you that have discrete NVIDIA graphics. Um, I always enable this. Um, I always leave it in time code and milliseconds, and I always drop it into HDV. So with that, here we are. Um, before we begin structuring our project, let's talk a little bit about these different panes. Here's your project. So anything associated with your project, uh, any files associated with your project will be populated here. It's always under the project tab. Um, your media browser, that's how you can import footage. Um, info, I don't really use this tab. Effects, I use this a lot. We'll talk about that. Um, this effects tab is associated with this pain your uh, your timeline um, anything that's being pulled from here is uh, being assigned to a specific clip within your your timeline markers uh, you can jump to markers I don't really use markers unless it's um, has something to do with uh, syncing up my audio history this helps you understand the changes you've made to your project effects control uh, remember when I talked about the effects panel any of these effects that are assigned to individual clips within your timeline if you select that clip the, the effects that are applied to that clip will populate here. Audio mixer, I don't use this metadata. I can't imagine any of you using this tab because this is the basics and I am no professional by any means. Here is your timeline display. So anything in your timeline is going to populate here and give you a preview. And finally your sequence. Uh, here you can see there are no sequences. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's structure our project before we build a sequence. A new bin is essentially a new folder. I like to mimic what my project folder is that I have. So again with the underscore video and we want another bin that's called audio. For those of you that have intros, watermarks, etc, etc, I usually uh, create a channel files bin so I can dump in all of that stuff within there. Alright, so now that we got the bones of our project, let's go ahead and drag some stuff in. I like to return to my desktop, open this, and I have video. So I'm going to bring it in, drop it into the video bin. And let's go ahead and drag that audio in. Now that we have video, this is what determines my sequence. So I have video that was shot at 29.9 frames per second, or 30 frames per second. With that information, I can now create, by right clicking, go into new item and sequence. Depending on what camera you shot it with, in my case, I shot this with a DSLR. So I'm gonna go ahead and select 30 frames per second, 30 frames per second under a DSLR. And again, I wanna be descriptive with my naming and go ahead and hit okay. So now we have a sequence that's populated the timeline. And this matches this, so if I were, well actually, wrong one. If, and this matches what my source video is. You wanna steer clear of mixing frame rates. Uh, you can create motion blur and drop frames. Let's say you created a, a sequence that was, that didn't fall in line with your source footage. I have a different sequence open. So when I try to drag this stuff over into the sequence, cause the sequence settings were uh, at a lower frame rate. Premiere Pro has a protection in place for you that is to notify you that the sequence doesn't match your settings, which is a good thing. So you can essentially set up any kind of sequence and it'll try to match the first source footage that you try to drag and drop into it. I would say change sequence settings and then that this sequence now mimics the frame rate at which your source footage is. 
hopefully that made enough sense. We don't want to drag. We don't want to immediately drag it into our timeline. We want to select specific areas of our source footage. So I'm going to start with the upper. This seems pretty good, but you see how I messed up here. We want to avoid that initial uh, hiccup. So I'm going to, this seems where some good footage has started. You want to mark in or hit I on the keyboard. I usually just use these mark tabs and I find the end. So this little bit of footage is prime for my final project. Let's talk about the three different ways that we can drag our source footage into our timeline. Um, this icon here says drag video only, which brings over the video side of your source footage only. This here will bring over the audio only. And if you want to bring over both synced up and everything, you can drag from there and it brings both. So those are the three different ways to handle your source footage. Um, next, I want to sync some audio. I have some footage of me just talking about some some crap. As you can see here, I, I start my, uh, to sync it, I, I do a clap. As you can see, there's a spike in audio to where um, the audio peaks. That's exactly where I want to be. So that peak, I'm going to start a little bit before that, and I'm just scrubbing this by hitting the arrow keys on my keyboard. Um, and then I like to drag in all of it. So I'm going to drag in everything from there, from the whole project. So let's jump over to the audio pane. I like to just drag this directly into the timeline. And we can in increase this by hovering over this and scrolling up on your mouse or your trackpad. So we want to do it to both so we can see the, the waveforms. And wow, that, that was really easy. Um, it looks like it's synced up like right now, almost. Um, but usually I scroll in. To scroll in, you hold down the option key on your keyboard and up and down on your mouse or your trackpad. To scroll in, you, you get more granular control over how far you move your, your footage. As you can see, the time, the time code, it's saying plus or minus. So we want a plus, but it looks like we want a minus like by two. So one more maybe two more. That's damn close. So at this point I have these lined up um, and you can test your footage by you know just scrolling through it and you can hear there's kind of an echo. Um, you can you can mute your tracks and jump between them to make sure they're they are synced and I'm happy with that. So now that I'm happy with this I want these these two pieces of footage this one and this one to be synced forever and I don't really need this because this is this is not prime audio for me so having this selected I'm gonna right click and unlink it so now when I delete that that track is the thing that goes away um, without that let's go ahead and link these back up and I'll show you what happens if these are still linked and you try to select the audio here and delete it, it's going to delete the whole the whole source footage that you dragged in, so we need to unlink them. And at that point we can delete, and now I'm going to link this portion. So before you link these, these two source footages, make sure that you clean it up and make sure they're lined up. And the footage should be synced up. Everybody, yeah, that looks really good. All right, moving on. Let's talk about the effects panel. I never waste time searching for effects. Um, maybe that's why I'm not using as many as I could, but I always use this quick filter. Uh, from here, I want to apply some transitions. There, there are two or three main transitions that I use. I use the cross dissolve. So just starting to type cross, I see there's cross dissolve that's already populated, and then I can drag it here and we can see that uh, the transition is a lot smoother um, which is a benefit to me because it makes your makes your project look a, a little bit more professional instead of a quick jumps but sometimes that's what you want to achieve um, outside of that let's cut so with C let's cut out some of this footage here and I usually ripple delete but there are some instances that you can't do that but I'm not going to talk about those in in this video because this is just the basics um, let's look for dip to black and there we go there are two transitions that's how you apply them and that's how I recommend that you navigate this effects panel the next effect that I like to, to use a lot is a uh, color corrector there are two main color correctors that I use uh, fast color corrector which is just one thing and the three-way color corrector which is probably my favorite um, just by grabbing this color corrector and dumping it onto that I still 
and, and I'm navigating this by C and B. So C is to cut footage out, and B is to select it and move it around. So when you see me do that, that's, that's how I'm changing these two here. So V, and select it, and remember when I talked about the effects that are associated with that individual clip that you dragged on, this is where that stuff will be populated. So if I were to drag, if I were to click this, that those that three-way color corrector is no longer associated with this part of the footage. So here I have this, and I'm not I'm not a colorist or anything. I just play around with this. Um, but I know you were looking for the dark parts of your footage and the midtones. Here's some highlights that are probably beneficial. Let's brighten that up a little bit. I like to be precise, so you can type into those. That's probably a little too bright, but hey, whatever. Let's move on. Um, we can drag up the saturation to make the brightness not so bad. But again, this is just for demonstration purposes. And you can see the difference between the two uh, pieces of footage. One's super bright and has a little bit more detail. Uh, you can mess with contrast and whatnot. Uh, but this is for you to explore. I'm just showing you how to get there. Uh, the next thing that I use is Warp Stabilizer. Let's zoom out of here. I hold down Option to zoom in and out on the timeline. So that's how I'm accomplishing this. Uh, let's go ahead and look at some of the source footage I have some in here we can stabilize this piece to make it look like it's more floating so hitting I or on your keyboard or clicking this will allow you to select the in point and then we want an out point let's grab there and I only want the video only it's a very small piece of footage uh, but in the grand scheme of things we can zoom into this to get to where we want to go uh, within the effects panel we're gonna look for warp stabilizer populates and this is going to analyze. So if we go over to the effects control, uh, you can see that it's analyzing uh, each frame individually. It can take a little bit. Back to my point to where we want our sequences to match our source footage. If your sequence and your source footage differ, uh, Warp Stabilizer will not, it just won't work. I don't know the specifics of it. Again, I'm a novice and this is just what I've learned through trial and error. If you want to have that, you're going to have to create another sequence. That sequence has to match. Uh, source footage and then you can apply warp stabilization so to avoid all that just make sure your sequence matches your source footage let's see the kind of the final product that looks really good you can see warp stabilizer has been applied you can mess around with the the details of the warp stabilization that is um, associated with that source uh, footage but we won't do that here and if after the fact that you've applied warp stabilization to uh, a piece of footage and we're in the effects panel and we want to cross dissolve this you know, we, had, we want to have a nice transition. You're going to have to reanalyze some frames. I know that the this needs to be reanalyzed. To reanalyze, because if you export, this will stay on the screen uh, because this still needs to happen before you render. So to do that, again, if you're not on the footage and you're wondering where your, your options are, your preferences, just make sure you have the source footage that has warp stabilization applied to it selected so that the effects controls will uh, populate and usually it's more often than not the uh, warp stabilization is collapsed like this so we want to expand it and then reanalyze the frames so it's just going to go through its process again and I don't think it goes through all of the frames I think it just goes through the transitioning frames we'll wait for this to occur and there we go here we have a cross dissolve into a warp stabilized piece of footage if you want to see the effect of the footage that has any kind of effect applied to it, um, you can just uh, use this effects toggle. So let's go ahead and play that and we can turn it off and on. You see there's a little bit of a difference there. It just looks a little bit more smooth. We have a project that is done. Um, it can get more detailed than this. I'll leave that to you to explore because um, this is just a foundational knowledge of interacting with Premiere Pro. Now that we have this ready to export, we need to render. My CUDA acceleration has rendered this into the mid-level. I don't understand this fully, so uh, there are three levels. One's red, which means it's, uh, I'm assuming, which is probably the lowest level that needs uh, the most uh, help with render. Uh, things like After Effects compositions, etc., etc. The yellow that you're seeing now, it's the mid-level of render. And with CUDA acceleration, it, it pre-renders almost everything to this. Um, some of you may not have discrete graphics, so when you have footage in here like this, it automatically defaults to the red level. And then there's the green level, which means it's completely rendered. So we want to render this. Make sure your timeline pane is selected when you go up to sequence, and we want to render into out. This takes a little bit to occur. 
the more effects you have applied to your footage, the longer it takes to render. So just keep that in mind when you, you start stacking effects. So here we have a completed project. And before we move into the next step, this is where I ask you to take the time to watch your own video. Is your message clearly conveyed to your audience? Those are the things that I look for. And then does it look nice? Um, is there something wrong with some footage? Do I need to recheck something? Those are the things that I look for. So with that, let's go ahead and move on. So if I'm if I have this this pane selected and I go up to file and export, I won't have media. So we have to make sure that we're selected. We've selected our timeline because this project is what we're going to export. From here, we go up to file, select export and go to media. This is where we're going to set our export settings. Let's start from the top. I always go H.264 YouTube and we want to make sure that it's the, the frame rate matches up with our source video. So from there, select the video tab, the target bitrate and the maximum bitrate. YouTube handles a high bitrate so it's going to take longer to export um, but the quality of your videos it will definitely show um, and always choose a two pass. These are just my personal settings you can do what you want and uh, export the way you want. I always check use maximum render quality and check use frame blending. Uh, so the estimated file size of this is 794. Here's a common misconception. I've seen a lot of people just go straight to export. We're we're exporting straight from Premiere Pro. Don't do that. Hit the Q. Let's let's dump it into Media Encoder. And now that we have our project that's populated here and ready to export, let's go ahead and go over to our project, hit save, and quit Premiere Pro. The project here is ready to go. Before you do this, and if you have a slow machine and you want to speed up your uh, processes, make sure you quit everything in your dock because it's taken up. Uh, it's taken up processing and in addition to that if you have an, uh, an automatic time machine backup make sure you go into it and turn it off this will slow your export down significantly if it's on if it's conducting a backup while it's exporting so those are the two things that I would recommend before you you begin exporting from here you're gonna go ahead and start the export and then it'll just run let it go I'm not gonna do that here because I don't want to export this project but that about covers uh, the basics of Premiere Pro and editing a project for your audience. So I'm going to close for now. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Um, if you've taken away something from this or have a, a better way of doing something, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. I'm always open to learning new things. Again, I didn't preface this video very well, but I am no expert in Premiere by any means. That about does it for me in this one. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you didn't, leave a thumbs down. I value your feedback, so feel free to comment and ask questions as well. After you're done liking, disliking, commenting, or sharing, go ahead and check out some of my other videos. In addition to that, check out my channel. If you liked what you've seen here and what you've seen on my channel, you're more than welcome to subscribe. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Take care.